Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. So this is the recording for uh, lecture topic number one. Uh, for subject, bigger uh, framework and issues in Summit Bank and Finance. Okay. So the first topic is about uh, the introduction, which is we're going to see the overview of legal framework for Islamic banking and finance. Okay, so before we start, uh, basically, this is a simple fact which I would like to share. Okay, so basically, nowadays, okay, uh, we have around uh, 520 banks okay, and 7,000 and 1,700 mutual funds around the world. Okay, which is basically uh, Sharia compliance. Okay, and then basically, okay, uh, we can see a tremendous growth of Islamic financial asset, okay, especially from uh, the year 2020, uh, sorry, 2012 and 2019, okay, and then, okay, even though, okay, even though with the COVID pandemic, okay, we can see a slow pace, okay, of the growth, okay, but then, okay, we can see, still see, okay, we can still trace, okay, uh, consistent increase, okay, of this, uh, Islamic financial assets. Okay, so basically, this indicates that okay, that Islamic banking and finance okay, basically uh, is growing around the world. Okay, and then of course, when we mention about Islamic banking and finance, it is basically a banking system which is grounded in the tenets of Islamic faith. Okay, and then basically, it depends on the principles of Sharia relating to commercial transactions. Okay, uh, and then of course, okay, when it comes to Islamic banking and finance, okay, uh, the discussion, the okay, majority of discussion can be found uh, from uh, from the discussion of Muslim Muris, okay, relating to Faith Al Muhammadan. Okay, so basically, brother and sister, okay, uh, why we must learn, okay about legal framework okay so basically uh, framework is itself we can understand as structure okay so basically when we understand the legal framework when we understand the legal structure when we understand the regulatory uh, foundation of the market and finance in a certain country uh, basically you know it's just like holding uh, a map okay where basically uh, by having this map, okay, you will never lose. Okay, so whenever you find any kind of you know confusion or anything, you can just easily okay go back okay and refer to this map. Okay, and then this is why it is important to learn about the framework or uh, the regulatory structure of this matter finance. Okay, so before we go further, okay, it is important for us okay to have a little bit discussion on the history okay on the history of making finance uh, especially when it come to the okay to its uh, to its original existence okay and then of course we're going to look also uh, the development okay when it come to make finance okay in the modern world okay we're going to try also to understand okay the the the, the existence okay of the financial system Okay, and then for this discussion, to make it much more easier, okay, we will refer to Malaysia, Malaysia scenario, okay, and then of course later on we're going to look at the uh, part B also, okay, this is relating to uh, the responsible authorities or, or the responsible regulatory bodies, okay, which have the main uh, roles and functions, okay, when come to the development, okay, of this making and finance. In relation to okay, <coughs> so brothers and sisters, okay, first thing first, okay, when it comes to the banking and finance, okay, it is a banking and finance system that derives its operations and activities from Sharia principles, okay, and then unlike, okay, unlike conventional banking system, okay, basically, uh, it's a banking and finance combine, okay, combine the principles that divinely uh, derived from Al Quran Karim. Okay, and then at the same time also, um, we can see that okay, the application okay, of the real practice of economy okay, through the uh, as is through the sorry, through the operation of banking system. 
Okay. <coughs> so when it comes to the features of its banking and finance, okay, these are the several. Okay, these, these are the several uh, important features of its banking and finance in contradictory okay, to commercial banking. Okay, so right now when it comes to its banking and finance, okay, it is prohibited. Okay, to for us to apply interest or riba in its operation. Okay, same goes to the element of horror or uncertainty. Okay, and at the same time also, okay, under the market finance, they appreciate okay, this sharing concept. Okay, and then at the same time, money is used as a medium of exchange and not as a capital. Okay, so basically, if we, we can compare with the commercial banking, okay, basically money is used as a capital. This is why how uh, they can use uh, money, okay, to gain profit. Which, which basically come in the form of interest. Okay, but okay, in Islamic bank and finance, okay, money basically is can only be used as a medium of exchange, okay, not as a capital. Okay, and then not just that, brother and sister, in Islamic bank and finance, basically it is prohibited. Okay, it is prohibited in its operation. Okay, uh, the existence of element speculation, okay, or my steel. Okay, and then to so make it finance appreciate okay, the sanctity of contracts, okay, which can be formulated okay, between the bank and the customer, okay, between the Islamic bank and their customers, okay, uh, through uh, the formation okay, of the financing contract. Okay, and then at the same time, when it comes to Islamic bank and finance, it also uh, involves Sharia approved activities. Okay, and then when it comes to sharing our proof activities nowadays, okay, it become uh, much more uh, prominent okay, among among uh, uh, among the players inside the market. Okay, especially nowadays we can see the rise of you know uh, ethical investments. Okay, so sharing our proof activities basically uh, are meeting okay, the need okay for having you know uh, ethical investment. Okay, so these are the main features of Islamic banking and finance. <clears throat> so, brothers and sisters, let us look at the historical development of Islamic banking and finance. Okay, this is also as part of the introduction of for this topic. Okay, so basically, you know, we can see uh, basically the historical development of Islamic banking and finance can be traced from you know, several phases of Islamic civilization. Okay, and then you can see here, you know, you can see starting from the pre Islamic period, okay, in the Arab Peninsula, and then uh, the era of Rasulullah, okay, and then it continues with era of Khulafa Rashidun or the four guided caliph, okay, and then we can see the era of you know, the next generation, okay, which are era of uh, uh, Umayyad, okay. Abbasid and Ottoman Caliphs, okay, and then at the same time also by the sister, we're going to see also how okay how is market and finance basically been revived okay in the twentieth century, okay, and then it also can be further divided okay, into four main phases, okay. So let's us look into details, okay. So basically, when it come to the pre-Islamic period in the Arab Peninsula. Okay, basically during this time we must understand okay, the the social economic situation in this in this era. Okay, so basically Mekah was the center of trade. Okay, was a center of trade and basically it is a place of transit point um, by traders. Okay, which is basically uh, using okay, which is basically visiting. Okay, Mekah. Okay, uh, from one city to another city. Okay, basically from uh, the north and south borders. Okay, and then at the same time also we can see that other cities of trades uh, such as Yasrib, okay, uh, which is later known as Madina and Habsha, okay, or now this is known as Utopia, is basically quite uh, quite nearby, okay, around Mekah, okay, and then not just that, okay, basically we can see, okay, uh, a continuous trading, okay, continuous trading uh, between Arab and Jews, okay, and then this is basically a common practice, okay, during that time. And then not just that during this time they have they have they already have okay, the, the the primitive concept okay of deposits and of course uh, the use of money okay during the, the, the time of Mecca. 
okay and then basically the brothers and sisters okay we can see the the, the, the situation here okay has been described has been recorded okay in surah uh, Quraysh, uh, verse one to four okay uh, where often i mentioned for the accustomed security of the Quraysh, they accustomed security in the caravan of winter and summer let them worship the lord of his house who has fed them okay saving them from hunger and make them safe okay saving them also from fear okay because of the location of mecca uh, itself basically they are secured okay, from any kind of war okay uh, by the neighboring power uh, surrounding the area okay <clears throat> so now this about so basically brothers okay and sisters okay uh, during this time also okay basically they already have okay certain transactions okay which is done for their commercial uh, daily activities okay so we can see here okay basically they already have the the mudarah the mudarabah concept okay the partnership contract okay the mudarabah contracts okay such as for example we can see it is basically the form between Rasulullah Rasulullah okay this is happened before his prophethood okay with his uh, with with Khadijah okay for trading activities to Syria which is from Mekah to Syria okay and then not just that during this also we can see okay Musharrafah contracts okay which happened between Rasulullah okay uh, again uh, before his prophethood okay with uh, Saifi bin Aid for trading activities to Yaman okay and then we also have you no know, a very basic uh, what ah yet amanah this is what we know as safe keeping okay safe keeping contract okay uh, where basically people will deposit certain uh, valuable items to rasul salam okay because he is very trustworthy okay even he is very famous with the title al amin okay among the people in mecca okay so you can see here they have already they have already this kind of contracts okay but then uh, okay amongst uh, those you know traders in, uh, in which do the trading in Egypt, the trading in Mecca, basically they 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 not only you know using these contracts okay but then they also apply okay? they also apply those uh, as this, sorry those prohibited elements okay such as rural my seed okay and then of course uh, you know the element of the element the prohibited element okay uh, such as you know they don't even care about the uh, the, the weight okay? the weight of the goods for example okay so basically it involves a lot of you know mischief okay and then <clears throat> after okay now let's us look at the next era okay so basically the era of uh, rasul asalam okay started okay basically it start with the coming of islam okay basically okay uh, starting point okay of the coming of islam okay it begins with the first revelation okay with the first divine revelations uh, uh to rasul salam okay uh, okay and then uh, basically what happened here okay what happened here shari'ah been revealed okay to this divine revelation okay uh, and then of course also okay here we can see that uh, the essence okay the essence or the origins of the asset banking finance basically being derived okay, from this moment okay and then basically you know by the assistors okay uh, during this time okay we're not talking uh, the banking concept as what we can see nowadays okay this is basically the essence okay the principles okay where basically uh, it's a banking and finance uh, being developed okay so right now what happened then okay uh, with the coming of Islam, Islam teaches us to uphold justice and to avoid okay, any kind of any form of oppression. Okay, thus it, it basically you know brings an end to those activities which involve usury or any kind of mischief, okay, such as you no know, involvement of gambling and speculation in trade and businesses. Okay, and then not just that, brother and sister. Okay, yeah, Islam also okay. Uh, uh, Islam also encourage, okay, also encourage, okay, uh, Muslims, okay, to practice, okay, to practice uh, a real tradings, the the real economic tradings, which basically appreciate, okay, appreciate the element of of fair tradings, okay, among the partners, okay, among the 
the seller and purchaser, okay, and then when it comes to the formation of contract, okay, uh, they must fulfill their obligation based on the term of the contract, okay, and then not just that, okay, uh, we can see that during this time also, okay, with the coming of Islam also, uh, the practices, okay, the training practices, okay, which been uh, carried out, okay, uh, during the ignorant time or the jahiliyah time. Okay, basically been cleansed during this period with the coming of Shariah. And then does that, okay, uh, the practical approach uh, of these uh, tradings or the examples can be seen from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Okay, because Rasulullah, uh, Rasulullah Sallam himself uh, was involved okay, in the trading business. Okay, and then when it comes to wedging, exchange uh, and prohibitions, okay, Basically, we can see a clear approach in wedging of items, okay, such as wheat and barley. Okay, basically, uh, it must be, you know, it must be, uh, you know, the the way itself okay, must be counted okay, with honesty. Okay, and then not just that. Okay, uh, when it comes to the exchange of gold and silver, uh, or vice versa, basically we uh, shall uh, provide uh, a very clear principle on that. Okay. And then at the same time also, there is a complete ban, okay? A complete ban on usury or riba, okay? And then this is clearly mentioned by Allah Ta'ala uh, in, in one verse, okay? Wahanallah ulbay'ah waharrama riba, which means that Allah Ta'ala permits sale, okay? Okay, but then when it comes to riba, it is prohibited. Okay, so after the era of Rasulullah Sallam, okay, we have the time, the era of the rightly guided four caliphs or Khulafa al Rashidun. Okay, so basically, uh, this Khulafa al Rashidun, okay, basically, uh, okay, the first the first caliph, basically, okay, sorry, the first caliph was uh, was appointed, okay, after the demise of Rasulullah Sallam, okay, and then basically, uh, this four. Uh, guided Caliph, okay, guided Caliph, basically they are Salina Abu Bakar, Radiallahu uh, Anhu, and then Umar Khattab, Radiallahu Anhu, Usman Al-Fan, Radiallahu Anhu, and then lastly, we have Salina Ali, Radiallahu Anhu, okay, so during the region, okay, you will understand again, okay, the socio-economy of this, this the, the, of the time, okay, basically during this time, the Islamic State territories, okay, basically been expanded, Okay, further beyond the peninsula Arabs, okay, and then during this time we can see that okay, uh, they have, they have much more complex when it comes to their transaction and commercial dealings, okay. So, so during this time we can see okay, uh, the safekeeping uh, contract for wadi ah, okay, and lending okay for the Hassan okay or benevolent loan okay continue to be common okay in the Arab society, and then of course we can see basically okay the emergence of Ijtihad, okay, or Ijtihad, okay, the intellectual, um, uh, the process, the process of, you know, uh, getting into the rulings, okay, of certain matters, okay, basically we can see that, okay, it been processed, okay, it been developed by the companions during this time, okay, uh, and then basically, uh, this, this, yeah, is the hard, okay? The rulings which is made by the companion, uh, which basically been made because they have to face uh, new issues, new cases, which basically uh, are basically, which is basically you know, not in existence okay, during the time of Rasulullah. Okay, so we can see okay, during this time they face new issues. The situation is much more complex. Okay, so uh, for example, here you can see here. Okay, we have okay, uh, we have here okay, Abdullah bin Azubir. Okay, basically, okay, his father, okay, people, his father is Azubir bin Al Awab. Okay, he is basically one of the camp companions. Okay, so during this, this time, okay, uh, he said he mentioned that okay, people come to his father uh, to do safekeeping of their valuables. Okay, so instead of taking, okay, instead of instead of taking those valuables as deposit. Okay, so basically what he did, he took uh, all these um, valuables okay, as a loan. Okay, why he take as a loan? Okay, so in process, okay, let's say in the process of his safekeeping, okay, if the valuables are missing, okay, so basically he can uh, replace it back okay, uh, to the owner uh, as a loan. 
okay, with a different, with similar item or maybe the value of the items, okay. Uh, so by having this kind of situation, okay, by, by having this kind of ishtihad, okay, he managed to, he managed to uh, provide a, a remedy, okay, if in case, if the valuables is lost, okay. And then another, in, 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 another, sorry, in another situation, okay, we can see that the ishtihad which is made by Awa Siddiq, Okay, well basically he wrote to Anas on the law of zakat for musharakah. Okay, musharakah is basically a, 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 you know, a formation of partnerships. Okay, where basically this is the hard partners possessing joint property, okay, such, such as sheep, okay, have to pay its zakat equally. Okay, which means that okay, if it is uh, if party A, if the sorry, if the partner A have to pay fifty percent, okay, then same goes to another partner. Okay, uh, the, the the other partner also have to pay fifty percent. For example, okay, this is because uh, they have uh, equal. Okay, they have equal shares when it comes to the ship. Okay, uh, so basically the property itself is jointly owned by both of the, of the partners. Okay, <laughs> and then of course later on. Uh, we come to the era of Umayyad, Abbasid, and Ottoman Caliphates. Okay, so basically by the ancestor, you can see that okay, uh, the practices, okay, the practices which is basically relevant to the practice of asset making finance, as what we can see nowadays, basically come from a very long historical journey. Okay, and then during this time, during the era of Umayyad, Abbasid, and Ottoman, we can see that the society during this time becoming much more complex. Okay, uh, it is basically you know you can see during this time, some state basically been expanded. Okay, to one third of the of the globe. Okay, and then understand okay, during this time also we can see okay a lot of mixture of cultures. Okay, uh, during these times, we can see that it is not only Arabs are available in the state, okay, but then we can see also, okay, non Arabs, okay, non Arabs start to accept Islam, okay, and then at the same time, okay, they are nurturing the Islamic civilizations, okay, and then we can say that, okay, Abbasid Caliphate actually is, is known as the golden era okay, of Islamic civilization, okay, and then of course, when it comes to Mecca, Okay, it continues to be the, the, the center, okay, the center, okay, the center, uh, basically, especially because uh, it holds a, a, a very special position as the holy center, okay, for pilgrimage or hajj, okay, uh, since the time of Prophet Ibrahim A.S., okay, and then Mecca also continues to be the international trading activities, okay, the international center, the international trading center. For both locals and foreign traders. Okay, so during this time, we can see that the contract of sale or al buy okay, maintains as the common transaction okay, in the society. Okay, and then not just that, during this time, we can see uh, other financial practices, okay, other financial or transaction practices, as we can see from the example here. Okay, uh, they establish uh, DBs or tax collector. Okay. Uh, which is uh, which is uh, introduced okay, during the Muhammadiyah time, okay, and then during the region of Marwan ibn al Hakam, we can see okay, uh, they introduce uh, a new form, okay, a new form of you know uh, presentation of certificate, okay, which is known as suku, okay, uh, okay, and then not just that, okay, they introduce okay, ma okay, uh, money. Okay, which is made from pooper, which is known as fulus. Okay, and then by having this kind of um, instrument innovation, basically they can increase okay, the activity of money changing, okay, money exchange okay, during the Abbasid era. Okay, and then later on, okay, we have checks. Okay, you can see uh, even now this we still have this 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 application with check. Okay, but then basically you can see here check basically been introduced by. Army of Aleppo, okay, and then it is basically a, a negotiable instrument, okay, where basically he can use, okay, especially when he go, he went and visit Baghdad, okay. So you can see okay, this is the practices, okay, and then you can see basically when it come to the financing uh, activities, okay, even until now we can see 
okay, this kind of instrument okay, being uh, been utilized okay, during our time. Okay. <clears throat> so later on, brothers and sisters, what happened? Okay, they also known during this time also, okay, they have okay, they have certain form of you know um, banking activities. Okay, they have uh, bankers, okay, which is known as sarafin or sayarifah. Okay, uh, and then of course, okay, um, even though okay, even though uh, there is no specific, there's no specific uh, autonomous or quasi autonomous institution that carry out business dealing with money, okay, such as bank nowadays. Okay, but then they have, they have subtly uh, sarafin with basically dealing with you know with borrowing money okay and then not just that okay uh because of the okay the continuous uh exchanges of cultures during this time they also have you know an engagement okay with the european countries during this time okay even the merchants of this era learn okay from the muslim traders okay when it come to business skill okay and then not just that okay uh, even uh, when it come to education okay they have to go to uh, muslim countries to learn okay because you no know, because muslim during this time is very advanced okay when you not okay not only advanced with knowledge but then they also advanced when it come to their business methods okay so after that brother and sister okay we can see with the con continuous okay clashes okay between uh, these civilizations okay we can see okay that on these merchants okay this this you no know, uh, european merchants this christian especially merchants okay basically okay later on they establish their own okay their own style of business okay and then of course when it come to their businesses they they involve okay uh, all those elements which is basically prohibited under Sharia. okay and then you can see okay uh, they established conventional bank with interest okay which basically started in italy okay and then you can see uh, the oldest conventional banks okay uh, still in existence until now okay it is known as banca monte okay uh, in sina italy okay and then it is still in operation since uh, 1472 okay why italy okay because uh, in italy okay they have their international port okay in italy okay venice okay so basically venice quite close with the african continent okay and then uh, you know the exchange of knowledge okay uh, basically okay even when it come if you follow the discussion about by Prof. dc uh, even when it come to you know uh, the contract law okay the contract law okay has been applied nowadays okay, even under the common law in the english law okay they have the elements which is similar to uh, the, the maliki school of law okay because why because this is because it, it can we can basically uh, in this his research from Maris Maglisi, even go back and trace okay the the link between uh, venice okay uh, with the you know which is basically very close with the african continent which have majority okay majority muslims okay that following the maliki school of law okay let not on okay uh let on okay they continue okay uh, with uh, the imperialism okay and then colonialism okay basically the way they go and colonize okay majority muslim countries okay and then they change okay they change the sharia from the sharia based uh, structure of islamic state okay to their uh, to their system okay so this is how the conventional banks started to grow in the islamic states okay including uh, including tanah melayu okay or malaya during that time okay which is mentioned during that time okay so this is the picture of the bank the banca monte bank okay it is still open for visit okay even you can open your account here if you want okay but then of course it is conventional in nature 
okay. And then later on about the assistance, okay. So let us look, okay, uh, on the revival of this banking and finance in the 20th century. Okay, so basically when it comes to the revival of the economic and finance in the 20th century, okay, uh, it can be divided into several pieces, okay, uh, which is basically depending on the period, certain period of years, okay. So during the, the phase one, okay, this has happened uh, before 1940, okay, this is the pre-1940s, okay. So basically here we can see, okay, basically the tremendous effect placed by Muslims to revive, to have okay, the systems okay, of banking, which is or financing, okay, which is basically uh, Sharia compliance. Okay? And then basically by the assistor, we can see okay, the earliest practice, we can trace the, early, the earliest practice, we can trace basically happened in Southern India in 1989, okay, where, a, where a minority Muslims group established a welfare association which is basically offering free uh, interest loans for Kodu Hassan. Okay, and then later on, we can see in phase, uh, in phase two, okay, from 1940s to 1960s, okay, we can see that there are several establishments of experiments, okay, to establish okay, the welfare association in Southern India, okay, from 1969 to 1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1969-1
nowadays we have you know with the continuous efforts okay we now we have you know each of the country in the world uh, they have certain inclinations okay uh, towards having towards establishing their own this making and finance industry okay but then if we can measure okay each of the country have different uh, have a different development okay uh, for example in Malaysia Indonesia alhamdulillah we are our instrument making and finance industry are very established okay and then not just not that it's, it is very especially well known in the world okay uh, and another example okay in Morocco okay they start to have okay they, they already have their own instrument making and finance industry okay but then now they are moving towards establishing their own Islamic capital market okay to support the, the industry okay and then we have newcomers okay newcomers in smk finance which basically just recently okay, just recently uh, established their own industry okay such as uh, in Tajikistan okay and then of course okay we also have uh, countries such as Uzbekistan okay, which want to okay which want to establish their own industry of SMK and finance okay so basically uh, based on this data okay in 2018 up to 2018 okay we have uh, the entire asset okay total asset value of SMK banking and finance globally basically can be counted to uh, it is basically a, a promise oh, sorry approximately reaching to 1.76 trillion USD dollars okay and then of course but then uh, in our time here in 2022 Okay, the value of the entire asset okay, is basically reaching uh, three uh, trillion dollars. Okay, you can see yeah. Okay, so basically when it comes to the modern establishment by the ancestor, okay, so basically you can uh, you don't need to go and refer to the entire basis to the entire era. Okay. Uh, but then when people mention about the modern okay, establishment of SMK finance, you can refer to this revival pace okay, in the 20th century. Okay? But then you can see from our discussion, again, the essence okay, of what we have now, what we have now in SMK finance can be traced back okay, up to the time of Rasulullah okay and then not just that okay the principles that we have and what we apply nowadays when it comes to smk and finance okay it is basically being derived okay from the al quran and then of course the sunnah okay the practices of rasulullah okay by the ancestors okay so this is a, a simple map okay so this is shows the, from this map we can see okay uh, the, the the development okay the size of is making finance around the world today okay this is basically taken from is market okay and then you can see okay we have several several uh, new emergence okay, in the map okay which is very small okay but now hopefully it can go further okay in Malaysia, you can see yeah, we are known, Malaysia is basically known as one of the center for Islamic uh, banking and finance market globally. Okay, especially when it comes to suku issuance, okay. Alhamdulillah, uh, we still uh, holding the first place okay, uh, when it comes to the when it comes to the suku issuance. Okay. So by the end system, okay, Alhamdulillah, we finish, finish the first part of our discussion. Okay, now let's ask look okay, at the Islamic financial system. Okay, uh, I have to explain all of this first. Okay, before before we go to the discussion on legal framework. Okay, because you know it is important for your to develop your understanding. Okay, so when it comes to Islamic finance system in Malaysia, okay, now specifically focusing on Malaysia, okay, we start with 1970s, okay, where basically we can see the emergence of Islamic okay, movement, okay, and then we have in 1980s, okay, um, the Bumi Putra Economic Congress, which basically okay, the most uh, important issue when it comes to this Bumi Putra Economic Congress is they want to establish a clean Sharia compliant fund okay 
especially for Muslims in Malaysia to perform Hajj. Okay, and then of course the government later on establish okay uh, establish the pilgrimage board, which is known as Lembaga Tabung Haji. Okay, and then basically you know the learning process. Okay, when come to so making finance, okay, the the process basically been learned. Okay, from the establishment of Lembaga Tabung Haji. Okay. But then again, Lemaga Tamu Haji, okay, it is basically, we cannot consider Lemaga Tamu Haji as a bank, okay, because Lemaga Tamu Haji specifically been established to manage, okay, the, the collection of uh, fund uh, for Muslims to perform Hajj, okay, or pilgrimage, okay. So later on in 1981, the government appointed the National Steering Committee on is a banking okay, basically to study the operations okay uh, to have you know share compliant banking system okay and then basically they release okay, this national steering committee they release a report and then they submitted the report to the government in 1982 okay uh, by virtue of the report okay basically in 1983 okay Islamic Banking Act 1983 was gazetted for the first time and then basically it is enforceable on 7 of April 1983 and then from this uh, important regulation which is Islamic Banking Act 1983 they manage okay they manage to establish the first Islamic bank in Malaysia which is known as Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad okay and then not just that okay it is also uh, established yeah, under the Common Act 1965 on the 1st March 1983, okay, and then it commenced its operation as a bank, as an Islamic bank on the 1st July of the same year of 1983, okay. In 1994, okay, we can see after 10 years of the establishment, uh, the Islamic banks continue to grow strongly, okay. Thus, the government decide okay, to launch the interest-free banking scheme, okay. Uh, or it is also known as um, Islamic window, okay? The scheme basically allow the conventional financial institution to offer Islamic banking products and services, okay? Uh, which subject, okay, they have to fulfill certain requirements, which uh, they have to fulfill the requirement of Sharia compliant nature, okay? And then the same year also, the Islamic intermarket market banks, sorry, the Islamic interbank market was introduced, okay? So you can see in 1984, the market, the Islamic, uh, the, sorry, the the market inside Malaysia for for the for the use of this market finance starting to be much more complex. Okay, this this um, this indicate okay, the growth. Okay, the growth which is actually happened inside the industry. Okay, in 1997, okay, the Central Bank of Malaysia or Bank Negara Malaysia, in short BNM, okay, established the National Advisory uh, Sharia Council. Okay. Uh, National Sharia Advisory Council, okay, on Islamic banking and finance, sorry, on Islamic banking and Takahu, okay, they have the role, okay, the SSC, okay, the Sharia Advisory Council or SSC, they have the main role to advise the Central Bank of Malaysia when come to the Sharia matters, Sharia issues, which are relevant to the uh, Islamic banking and finance activities, okay, so you can see that you know uh, how now. Um, the market itself now start to grow further. Okay, in 1999, they established the second full fledged Islamic banks, which is known as Bank of Malaysia Berhad. Okay, in 2004, okay, they allow uh, foreign Islamic banks to operate in Malaysia. Okay, this is why we have the international Islamic banks. Okay, such as Quit House. Quit, quit House. Okay? and then of course we also have no another bank which is known as uh, Roshi Banks. Okay. So they are uh, Islamic, okay, international Islamic banks, okay. And then you can see by the ancestors, okay. Now this uh, <coughs> come to our time, okay. We have more than forty Islamic banks which are in operation in Malaysia, okay. And then not just that, okay. In two thousand thirteen, okay, uh, they basically they uh, repeal, okay, the Islamic Bank Banking Act nineteen eighty three. Okay, and then they further introduce much more uh, reform, okay, much more reform uh, regulation, okay, to further strengthen, to guide the industry, 
okay, by introducing Islamic financial services side, okay, to the thin, okay, which is basically enforceable to Islamic banking and finance, okay, and then at the same time also they have also uh, financial services act to the thin or FSA to the thin, which is enforceable, okay, towards the conventional banks in Asia, okay. And then during the okay, uh, because of their implementations, okay, automatically okay, the rest okay, the old uh, the old laws okay, we basically been repealed okay, been replaced okay. This my banking act nineteen eighty three, the whole act nineteen eighty four, payment system act two three, and exchange control act nineteen fifty three. Basically, all these laws are been repealed, and then of course it been uniform. Okay, and then brothers and sisters, with the introduction of Islamic Financial Services Act 2013 and Financial Services Act 2013, okay, basically uh, it shows a clear indication that uh, in Malaysia we have you know um, dual banking system. Okay, we have Islamic banks. We also have the conventional banks. Okay, and then they are basically equal in footing okay? which means that it doesn't mean that the same bank is underneath uh, conventional bank no it means that they are in parallel okay uh, parallel dual banking system okay in Asia. okay by the system okay so this is to okay when it come to the financial systems in Asia, okay we have okay we have we can say that we have uh, three main sectors okay we have is banking and finance okay these are basically the major products that they have okay deposit investment and financing okay and then alhamdulillah we can see the continuous innovation happening for the products okay and then we also have Islamic capital market okay yeah, equity suku fund and unit trust REITs derivative private equity venture capital this is some of the products okay and then when it come to takaful okay we have takaful and retakaful okay but then however brother and sister uh, when it comes to uh, Takafu, sometimes it's been discussed. Okay? If you go and refer book or to, to many books, okay? sometimes it's been referred together with the Islamic banking and finance. Okay, <coughs> so these are the simple my map. Okay, so brothers and sisters, okay, now let's ask look at the third part of our discussion, okay, uh, which is relating to development of Islamic banking and finance, okay, basically when it comes to the legal infrastructures, okay, again, as I mentioned uh, to you guys, okay, um, once you understand, okay, once you understand the legal framework of the country, okay, you just like you are holding a map, okay, so whenever you confuse something like that, okay, you can go and refer back to the map. Okay, so when it comes to the legal development and infrastructure of instrument and finance, basically by the sister, okay, different countries around the world, okay, different countries around the world have different legal development and infrastructures for instrument and finance. Okay, why? Okay, because their legal uh, development depends on the country's uh, regulatory framework their legal framework okay and then basically when it comes to the legal framework okay it depends also on their historical uh, okay foundation of their system okay of their legal system okay and and then basically this uh, directly or indirectly affect okay the way is making finance uh, been offered okay or practices okay, in, in in sorry in each of the uh, country okay so right now brothers and sisters okay around the, the globe okay we can divide okay uh, the legal development and infrastructure for semiconductor finance into three uh, situation in three in three different uh, legal development okay the first one we have countries we have countries where they don't have okay, any they don't have any kind special laws or regulations which is you know introduced uh, to regulate Islamic finance which means that they have to follow okay they are regulated okay by the general law okay on banking and finance okay of the country okay 
Yes, this is for example, we have, for, for example, in US, Singapore and Thailand, okay, they don't have any special law. Okay, so they have to follow the same uh, law just like the com commercial banks. Okay, and then second, the so second situation, okay, we have countries okay, where basically they have a special laws or regulation for its market finance. Okay, and then at the same time also they have the general law. Okay, relating to banking and finance. Okay, such as Malaysia, okay, UAE, the United Arab Emirates. And of course, Brunei. Okay, so basically, for these countries, they have to refer to their special law on investment banking and finance, and at the same time, also they have to follow the general laws, okay, uh, which is applicable for them. Okay, and then of course, in third countries, okay, sorry, the third scenario for the countries where the countries basically are governed okay, by the Islamic law, okay, such as Saudi Arabia and of course, Sudan. Okay, so for this country, okay, um, it will be easier for them okay, to establish Islamic banks because they are already following the Islamic law. Okay. So brothers and sisters, okay, now we reach at the, the fourth part of our discussion, which is relating to legal and regulatory framework for Islamic banking and finance in Malaysia. Okay. Of course, okay, we can we will have another topic okay, relating to semi capital market. Okay, but then for now, let's us look at the legal and the regulatory okay, framework for some bank and finance in Malaysia. Okay, so again here we take Malaysia as an example. Okay, so basically by the assistant when it comes to the legal structure, the legal framework of some market finance, and of course the capital in Malaysia. Okay, uh, we have uh, basically okay we have. Uh, uh, two set, okay, two set of laws, okay, one which is known as the regulatory laws, okay, the regulatory laws which of course compulsory to be followed, okay, and then we have also laws on transactions, okay, this is pretty much relate, uh, related okay, to the transaction activities or the commercial dealings, okay, uh, which is carried out by the banks, by the Islamic banks, okay. So when it come to the regulatory laws, okay, by the assistant, okay, so you can see here, this is the summary, okay. The main regulation in Malaysia, okay, before, uh, this is prior to the establishment or the introduction of um, Islamic, Islamic Financial Services Act, okay, 2013, okay. Uh, we have here, okay, we have here, is it making finance and takaful? Okay, and this sector basically they have the same main regulator, which is the central bank of nation, okay, or bank negara nation. Okay, so here the important law is basically central bank of nation act zone nine, okay, the development financial institution act zone two, higher purchase act 1967. Okay, this is the old laws. Okay, still remember. Okay, you have to remember this is prior to 2013. Okay, we have Islamic Banking Act in 1980, sorry, 1983, Takaful Act 1984, Banking and Financial Institution Act uh, 1989. Okay, and then of course for the Islamic capital markets, okay, we have the main regulation is the Security Commission of Malaysia. Okay, and then this is the uh, regulatory their main regulation okay, which is enforceable in the Islamic capital market okay, which are Capital Market and Services Act 2007, Securities Commission Act 1993 and then of course Company Act 1965. Okay. But then again by the assistant, okay, when it comes to uh, Islamic market and finance, you have to uh, know these laws. Okay. But then this is prior to 2013. Okay. After okay, after the introduction of Islamic Finance Services Act 2013 or IFSA, okay, now we have you know every single laws been harmonized, been uniform into one single laws, okay, which is basically relevant for Islamic banking and finance and takaful institutions. Okay, and then of course, when it comes to Financial Services Act 2013, it is basically enforceable towards conventional banks. And insurance only, okay. Uh, and then of course, okay. So right now, uh, it is most importantly to understand, okay, the important, okay, the important of having uh, IFSA and FSA, isn't it? Okay. 
basically brothers and sister by having uh, this uh, these two important uh, regulations okay it basically place islamic and conventional banking at a parallel level just like i mentioned okay and then on just that both of the sectors okay, is making and then of course commercial banking can compete equally to attract the customers in the market okay and then so far by the ancestors okay alhamdulillah the market remain competitive okay and then it doesn't mean that okay since it's parallel okay uh, it's a bank can face problem from the convention okay basically in Malaysia you can see even uh, uh, non-Muslim citizen in Malaysia, they also uh, go to Islamic banks for their products. Okay, and then of course, with IFSA and FSA, a clear differentiation can be made okay, between the conventional and Islamic banking. Okay, and then on just that, okay, IFSA reaffirm okay, the status of the Sharia Highway Council okay, as the FA uh, authoritative body. Okay, for uh, reference when it comes to Sharia matters, okay, relating to banking sector in Malaysia, okay, and then on the start, okay, by having USA to maintain, they strengthen, okay, the concept of Sharia governance, okay, and their implementation, okay, inside, inside the Islamic banks, okay. Uh, previously in Malaysia we have Sharia governance uh, framework, okay, to the ten, okay, and then later on we have. Uh, this one okay now this we have the Shia governance uh, policy document okay and then more recently okay uh, we have another uh, the latest issuance on Shia on Shia governance uh, and of course you know between IOF and uh, IFSP okay and then when it come to the customer protection by the system okay uh, if so, I, it basically, you know, if so, I introduced the finance, financial ombudsman regime under section 138 under ISA, okay, to protect the right of the customer's right, okay, where under this section 138, okay, uh, they establish, okay, ombudsman for financial services or, or which is known also as OFS, okay, where basically the investment banking sector is exposed Okay, to the process of mediation and, and of course education in, in especially when it comes to dispute with the services of the banks okay and then uh, at the same time okay uh, with the continuous progress in the development in the legal development okay the nation judiciary introduced a special court of high court of malaya which is known as Mohamed court and Kuala Lumpur high court okay and then at the same time also okay the members of National Sharia Council can be called as expert witnesses okay, in giving their opinion relating to Sharia issues, especially when it comes to the Islamic bank and finance industry. Okay, so brothers and sisters, let us look at part B of our discussion. Okay, so it is basically you can see by the sisters. Okay, on this part B, we can okay, hopefully we can continue our discussion on regulatory bodies of Islamic Bank and Finance in Malaysia. Okay, so when it comes to the regulatory bodies in Islamic Bank and Finance, by and sister, we have two set of regulatory bodies. Okay, the first one is the local regulatory bodies, okay, which, which are the Central Bank of Malaysia for the sorry for the Islamic Bank, sorry, Islamic Banking and Finance and Takaful. Okay, and then we have the Security Commission of Malaysia, which is the authoritative body, the regulatory body, uh, which basically uh, govern okay, the Islamic the, the, sorry, the, the Islamic capital market in Malaysia. Okay. Secondly, we have international uh, regulatory bodies, okay, which is basically the Islamic Financial Services Board, IFSB, and then of course we have the accounting and auditing organization for Islamic financial institution or IOF. Okay, so right now, brothers and sisters, okay, when it comes to the Central Bank of Malaysia, the Central Bank of Malaysia basically plays its role, okay, as of this year in ensuring the safety, reliability, and efficiency of payment systems, infrastructure, and to safeguard the public interest. Okay, where basically uh, they have the role to formulate the regulatory frameworks, okay, and conduct oversight 
on most large value and retail payment systems, okay, which basically cover, okay, which is basically cover not only the banking finance industry, but, but then also the conventional banking, okay, and then of course they they continuously, okay, continuously they also can issue uh, guidelines, okay, to the industries, okay, and then of course they also have the the, the role to oversight. To, sorry, to look at okay, the oversight activities, okay, which is basically to 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 evaluate okay, systematic risks, okay, and then of course to reduce the overall risk in the payment systems. Okay, this is important to ensure the stability okay, for the financial system in Malaysia. Okay, and then when it comes to Bank Negara Malaysia, it was established under the Central Bank of Malaysia Act 1958. Okay. Which letter amended in 2009. Okay, so it's 2009. Okay, so basically you can go and click this website. Okay, to see the details when it comes to Bank Negara Malaysia or the Central Bank of Malaysia. Okay, and then next we have Security Commission in Malaysia. Well, basically uh, prior to 1993, we don't have any uh, one specific okay institution that basically govern the the, the capital market in Malaysia. Okay. Later on, the government introduced the Security Commission in 1993, which gave birth to the Security Commission of Malaysia, uh, which the responsible, the authoritative body, which is responsible uh, to govern and to, to govern the capital market in Malaysia. And of course, uh, it also includes okay, the Islamic capital market. Okay. And then they have the function to streamline the regulation of the security markets, okay, speed up the processing and approval of corporate transaction, and of course to provide sufficient protection to the capital market investors. Okay, and then not just that, the Security Commission Act 1993 also provide okay, the full disclosure based regulations and liabilities okay, for any kind of misleading or inadequate disclosure of information. Okay, so basically, when it comes to security information Malaysia, you can click and refer to this link. Okay, <coughs> and then I talk about the system. Okay, they have capital markets and services side in 2007, which introduced okay, which okay, basically, uh, was okay, the, the, the capital markets and services side in 2007 was introduced. Okay, and then with the introductions, okay, the security commission in 1993. Uh, receive okay a, a certain amendment okay basically by referring to okay they have you no know, they delete the division two of the uh, of part four of the act okay which is basically dealing with fundraising activities okay so they introduce capital market and services at two thousand seven okay which basically okay uh, by having this introduction they delete okay they deleted okay the division two of part four of the Security Commission Act 1993. Okay, and then now this okay, Capital Market Services Act 2007 is currently used or referred as the main legislation in relation to capital market regulation, okay, including the market. Okay, and then later on, they, they, they still they have another amendment, okay, the Security Commission Amendment Act 2007. Basically, been passed to facilitate the capital market and services like 2007. Okay, so you can see here, you know, the changes happen because you know they want to have you know uh, a much, a much, uh, you know, a much better, a much effective okay, form of oppression inside the capital market in Malaysia. Okay, <clears throat> so by that, sisters, these are the two uh, important uh, legislation. Sorry. Regulatory bodies, okay, for uh, Islamic sorry, yeah, Islamic bank and finance and takaful, and then uh, we have also security commission Asia, which is important for the capital market in Malaysia. Okay, so when it comes to the international bodies, okay, we have the Islamic Finance Services Board (ISB). Okay, it is basically when it comes to IFSB, it is an international standard setting organization that promotes and enhances the soundness and stability of Islamic financial services in Indonesia. Okay, they are also responsible to issue global prudential standard. Okay, and guiding principle for the industry. Okay, uh, 
And then of course, when it comes to FSB, they also conduct research, okay, and coordinates initiative on industry and issues, okay. They also uh, have from time to time seminar conferences, you know, sharings, okay, for regulators and the industry stakeholders, okay. And then sometimes they also also open, okay, their event for the public, okay. And then basically, when it come to uh, Pentagram Malaysia, okay. Uh, we are the full members under the IFSB, okay, and then so okay, because of, of our membership, okay, usually, okay, usually the Central Bank of Malaysia uh, will adopt, okay, the standard, okay, which is issued, okay, uh, by the IFSB, okay, so basically you can go and refer to this website, okay, uh, okay, and then of course, uh, again, the IFSB cannot, cannot force the Cannot force anyone to follow their standard. Okay, so it is up to the uh, central bank, okay, of Malaysia to adopt any of their standards. Okay, when come to your fee, okay, this is the accounting and auditing organization for Islamic financial institution for your fee. Okay, this is basically an international uh, autonomous non-profit corporate body that prepares accounting, auditing, governance, ethics, and of course, Shia standards for Islamic financial institution and industry. Okay, so basically, uh, IOFI issues stand Shia standards for time to time, and such standards are followed fully by countries such as Bahrain and Jordan. Okay, uh, again, in order to be implemented, the Shia standard must be adopted by the financial institutions. Okay, but well, then in nature situation, okay, if uh, if we want to apply the IOFI standard, okay, again, it must be uh, adopted okay, by the Central Bank of Asia, Okay, So basically, you can go and check the IOFI website on this link. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, okay, this is a question for you to think. Okay. Legal framework is important for the development of Islamic finance. In your opinion, how far such statement is true? Okay, so basically for this question, but the ancestor, okay, uh, basically for these questions, okay, uh, it, it, it wants you to give your opinion regarding the legal framework, okay. So basically, by the ancestor, as I mentioned to you guys, the legal framework, the, 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 okay, uh, it is important to understand the legal framework okay, or the legal structure for the establishment of Islamic and finance. Why? By having, but when we understand okay, the legal framework, when we understand the regulatory structures, okay, we can see, okay, we can understand, we can, uh, we can understand on how the Islamic finance on the country basically can develop, okay, and then on that, okay, uh, by understanding, okay, uh, with uh, sorry, with understanding the legal framework of the regulatory structure. We can also further enhance okay, the development of this market finance in the country. Okay, so by having so we can determine okay, what is necessary to be done, especially to make sure that the the the, the, the introduction of this market finance in, in in this certain country, okay, will be nature of compliance. Okay, basically the statement is true. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. Okay. By the way, this is the division of our marks. Okay. Uh, basically, these are the division of the marks. Okay. If you have any question, okay, you can ask me. Okay. okay. So thank you for listening. Assalamualaikum.